We want to thank you for being a Habitat volunteer. And as fun and rewarding as it is to build a home with Habitat for Humanity, safety comes first. Build sites can be dangerous, so it's paramount to be properly trained before you work. And that's why we want to review the rules and procedures necessary for a safe and productive build. Upon arrival at the job site, you'll meet with the site supervisor and the safety manager. You'll have a morning group and safety discussion at the start of the workday to review procedures specific to what you'll be working on that day. Please let your house leader, the site supervisor, or the safety manager know if there are any tasks you're uncomfortable doing. These are the key on-site go-to personnel that every volunteer should know before beginning work. If you have any questions, ask. Safety starts with what you wear to the site. You should dress comfortably, but don't wear loose or baggy clothing. Wear clothing that's appropriate for the work and weather conditions. Summer heat can be a hazard, so be sure to drink plenty of fluids and drink often. Heat exhaustion is triggered by excessive sweating and not drinking enough fluids. Serious cases of heat injury can lead to life-threatening heat stroke. Take rest breaks. Pants and overalls should fit properly and have legs without cuffs. Shirts and jackets should be kept buttoned. Sleeves should also be buttoned or rolled up. Don't wear jewelry or watches, and if possible, leave purses and wallets at home. Shoes should be sturdy with thick soles. Wear steel-toed shoes or boots if you have them. Hard hats are recommended anytime you're working on the site. They're required when any overhead work is being done and when working on or near scaffolding. Wear gloves, especially if you're carrying materials or involved in cleanup activities. Hand protection is important and in many cases prevents cuts and blisters. However, hand protection is not recommended while working with rotation tools that could catch your glove and pull your hand into the machinery. Wear appropriate respiratory protection when working with insulation or in dusty areas. Respiratory protection must be properly matched to the job task and your site supervisor can help you with this. Safety glasses or goggles are always recommended. Safety glasses are required when working near flying debris such as sawdust, and if you're near flying metal shavings or concrete chips, you'll need to wear a face shield as a second layer of protection. Construction sites can be pretty dusty places, so if you normally wear contact lenses, you should wear glasses instead. Corrective eyewear needs to meet safety standards as well. On the side frame of the glasses, look for a stamp that says Z87. The stamp means that your glasses meet safety standards. If your glasses don't have this stamp, then you'll need to wear goggles over your standard glasses. Hearing protection can also be required around some power equipment. Material safety data sheets are available to review necessary precautions before using any products. These sheets recommend protective equipment, outline health hazards associated with the product, and explain cleanup procedures. Before you go into a work area, survey the area to identify potential hazards. There's a lot going on on the construction site, so you need to be aware of your surroundings and what people around you are doing. Start by looking at ground level, then look at the area within your reach. Then finally, check out what's going on overhead. There may be temporary power lines and other obstructions. Be aware at all times of objects that could potentially fall from the roof. As we mentioned, we require you to wear hard hats while doing framing, demolition, or any time overhead work is being performed. Implement the buddy system, where you keep an eye on a fellow volunteer. Don't be afraid to tell that person to stop working if he or she doesn't look well. If the volunteer resists, alert the construction supervisor. Accept your buddy's recommendations as well if he or she suggests you take a break. Reflexes, balance, flexibility, and upper body strength typically weaken with age as does the ability to recover from an injury. But whatever your age or physical condition, don't lift heavy items or work from heights beyond your comfort or capacity. Ask for the location of the emergency action plan and take time to review it. Every work site has a first aid kit that's clearly visible along with an emergency contact phone list. Be aware of your surroundings, especially when carrying long objects. Note where your coworkers are and what they're doing and don't back up or move in any direction where you don't have a clear line of sight. And when you're up on a roof, never back up. If you have basic hand tools, bring them. 
hammers, tape measures, carpenters, pencils, tool belts, basic woodworking tools. We have a limited number of tools available, so it's a big help if you have your own. If you do bring your own tools, they must be in good condition and be approved by the site supervisor to make sure they're OSHA compliant. Please do not bring handmade tools or tools that you have modified. Make sure your tools are sharp and properly adjusted and that the handles are in good condition and are on tight. Dull tools are hazardous to use because excessive force must be used to make them work. Hold and use your tools correctly and always carry them with care. If you do bring personal tools, make sure they're identifiable as yours. With so many people on a build site, it's easy for someone to think your tape measure or hammer is a habitat tool. Brightly colored tape is a good way to quickly spot your tools and let others know they're not habitat property. We can't overstress the importance of exercising extreme care when using power tools. A serious injury can easily occur if you're not familiar with the correct procedures of operating power tools. So before you operate a power tool, make sure you understand all safety procedures involved. In general, if you use it correctly, you'll use it safely. Don't forget to inspect the tool for defects or safety hazards before use. Also make sure what you're cutting is properly supported and that your power saw is properly adjusted and tightened. Inspect cords to make sure they're in good condition and keep all power and extension cords out of walkways to prevent trip hazards. Always use outlets that have ground fault circuit interrupters or GFCIs or use an external GFCI at the power source. Ground pins need to be on all extension cords and grounded tools. However, it's acceptable to use double insulated tools that were not manufactured with a ground pin. Make sure the blade is clear before starting a saw. A jarring kick can occur if the blade is touching the wood when you power it on. Table saws must have guards installed and be in good working condition. And remember never to reach under material being cut. With saws and power tools, always unplug them when changing or adjusting blades drill bits or other accessories. Under no circumstances should you bring a nail gun to a habitat work site. Nail guns can be very dangerous when used by unskilled volunteers, so please use hammers only. Good housekeeping refers to the overall neatness and orderliness of the build site. A well-ordered work site is a proven component of accident prevention, so a clean job site is absolutely essential. Lumber or piles of trash should not be lying around. Such trip hazards can cause serious injury. Please keep track of the tools you're using, and when you're done with them, put them in a safe place so they don't become a trip hazard for you or someone else. And if you see something lying around, please pick it up. If you see a nail or a screw sticking out of a board, remove it or hammer it down. We're responsible for the safety of ourselves and our co-workers on the job site. To work safely with either hand tools or power tools, make sure you're on firm, solid ground. Do not try to work over rough piles of dirt or on stacks of material that are unstable. And always watch for slippery conditions. Be aware of excavated trenches or holes, gaps in the floors, steep drop-offs or other hazards. Only trained workers are allowed in or near an excavation, so stay six feet or more away from the edge. Holes in floors should have covers or guardrails around them and never leave a hole unattended. In general, good housekeeping is the best way to prevent fires. Flammable and combustible liquids must be properly stored and clearly marked. Locate fire extinguishers and learn how to operate them before beginning work. And always keep containers such as paint thinner closed when not in use. There are usually temporary overhead power lines on site, so be extra careful while carrying ladders and lumber. Aluminum ladders and long-handled tools such as concrete bull floats are not allowed near overhead power lines. Damp conditions will conduct electricity, causing shock and serious injury, even death, and could possibly start a fire. And please, no smoking on the habitat build site. Ladder safety is another area that requires your attention. We often take ladders for granted, but not following guidelines can cause serious injury. Always check the condition of the ladder before using it, and if you spot a problem, alert your construction leader. Only one person should climb a ladder at a time, and there should always be a person steadying the ladder for the climber. Do not use the top two steps or the braces of the ladder. They're not intended for climbing. Step ladders can only be used when fully open and spreader bars locked. Never exceed the ladder's posted load limits. The ground surface should be level and solid. If the surface is not level, make sure to secure the ladder base to stabilize it from accidental movement. Use the rubber pads on solid surfaces like concrete and use the swivel spikes in soil or gravel. 
Use the four to one rule. For every four feet in height, the ladder should be one foot out from the house. Ladders extending onto the roof should extend at least three feet past the roof. The same rule applies when working with scaffolding. Always face a ladder when climbing up or down, and always use the three points of contact rule. Two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand while climbing. When stepping off the top of the ladder to another walking surface, be sure the upper part of the ladder is made secure to prevent accidental movement of the ladder. Always keep the exit points clean and clear of debris to prevent ankle twists or tripping hazards. Most Habitat for Humanity construction sites use some form of scaffolding. The most common types found on our sites are fabricated welded, pump jack, and bracket scaffolding. Falls on scaffolding have become a big problem due to improper access, improper decking, unstable footing, collapse, and or missing parts. Meet with your site supervisor for training on how to use the scaffolding at your build site. We cannot stress enough the importance of roof safety. Falls are one of the most frequent and often most severe injuries on the job site. When working on a roof, always move slowly and carefully. Only fall protection train crews are allowed on roof details. Inspect equipment before usage. The trained work crew must always use some form of fall protection. Trained workers need to keep the roof clean and clear of those loose items that could cause someone to slip. Nails, shingles, tools, etc. Guardrails may be used for roof edge protection, so use caution when getting near them. Railings do have a 200 pound maximum force design, so do not sit or lean on them. Lifting and carrying involve simple rules, but they can be easy to forget. When lifting, stand close to the load, bend at the knees, knot your waist, and lift by straightening your legs and keeping your body as vertical as possible. Do not underestimate the weight of an item. If it feels heavy or is too bulky to see over or around, be sure to get someone to help move it. Always check for a clear walking path before you start your lift, and when possible, use available steps and stairways to prevent leg, ankle, foot, or back injuries. Remember, most of what we discussed is just good common sense. But sometimes we forget things that are obvious. Forgetting is dangerous on a build site. Safety is number one. If you spot an unsafe situation, calmly point it out. If you're not sure about how to do something, just ask. And if you feel uncomfortable about how things are being done, tell your construction leader. Thanks for your attention and thanks for sharing your time with Habitat. We all want a safe work project so everyone can enjoy the finished product. A simple, decent, affordable home.